Hey guys, Jared Wesley here of Live Traders, and it is that time of the week. It is lecture time, and this week's topic, guys, is pure gold. I really like this week's topic because I'm going to take three concepts and I'm going to put them into one. And I'm going to say, even though there's a lot of good lectures on this channel, this is one of the best lectures I've done. I rarely say that because it's kind of, you know, self-flattery. Um, but this lecture I think is very good. I think it's going to help you in these volatile markets that we're seeing, but not just volatile markets in all markets, because I think it's going to help newer traders as well. Give their trades a little bit more room, have a little bit more flexibility, look to add back, use the 84% rule. I have multiple concepts coming together in this lecture, guys. So I know, again, many of you have watched a lot of other lectures, but if you're going to watch one, watch this one, because I think it's very, very good. Now, to be clear, here, guys. Trading is an extremely hard business. It's super challenging. Probably one of the hardest things you will ever do. And most people fail at it. And the reason they fail is because they have terrible, terrible, terrible money management. So I'm going to talk a little bit about money management today. But honestly, most of this is charts. We're going to look at charts and we're going to talk about trade management as well, how to stay in a trade versus getting shaken out of a trade. If you do get shaken out of a trade, what you should do about it, and also looking to add back to some of your winning positions. Again, just rocket fuel today in this lecture. So I hope you guys enjoy it. If you like these lectures, please click the like button, smash, hammer that subscribe button. I am Jared Wesley of Live Traders. Let's get to it. This week's lecture topic is more room equals better results. Um, lately, the markets have been what I would call volatile. In fact, they've been extremely volatile um, to the point where uh, we're seeing things that we haven't seen before or perhaps maybe only saw in 2008, 2009, uh, where the market could be down 2% and then finish this day up 3%. It could be up 1% and then finish this day down 3 or 4%. Um, the volatility has been just impressive. That's the only word I can use off the charts, impressive. Um, we're seeing, like I said, some really highly unusual stuff. You know, we were talking earlier today um, in the chat room, but... Uh, you know, a one to one and a half percent gap in the Qs or the SPY uh, used to be a mega gap, like, oh my gosh, mega gap. Now you wake up and you expect the market to be gapping up or down one plus percent, sometimes two or more percent. So the question is, how do we mitigate? How do we get around? How do we deal with this market environment? Um, well, we're going to talk about that today. And that's where the more room equals better results uh, title comes in. Uh, so we're going to talk about maybe ways that you can navigate this uh, volatile environment better without getting tagged um, you know, all the time because it has been challenging when the market turns on a dime. But before we do that, before we get to that, we must first talk about when will the insanity stop? When will the insanity stop? Um, I was telling you guys that I had uh, one for you guys today. It was what I, what I think is sad. Um, you know, it's no more or less, or it's not worse than, than many of the other ones. Um, but you read it, it's like, it's heart wrenching, right? I've been married to my husband for 20 years. We have a very good marriage. Here's the context. He's very stingy with his money, blah, blah, blah. We don't care about that. Okay. Comes down to this. I started investing in the stock market and lost money. I tried investing back in to recoup my losses, okay? Paid for teachers, paid for courses. Clearly, those courses didn't teach money management, right? Which we'll get to in a second. But any time, anyways, time goes on. And before I know it, I've lost $350,000. That's a lot of money, right? For anybody, it's a lot of money, okay? He has no idea. Read that again. 20-year marriage. He has no idea. If I tell him, he'd probably divorce me. It's been over a year and he has no idea. Read that line. It's been over a year and he has no idea. He regularly asks for bank statements to see his money is there, but I'm a wizard with computers, so I make them myself and he is none the wiser. I don't sleep. I don't eat. He's going to find out. And he should. However, I mean, this should be on American Greed. Um... 
it's sad. It's sad to hear it, sad to read it. 20 years, good marriage. Um, you know, it's, uh, you know, sad. So the point simply here is money management is everything. Okay, whether it's $350, $3,500, $35,000, $35 million. Guys, you're not going to make it in this business, okay? If you don't have money management, right? And this is the whole purpose of doing When Will the Insanity Stop? Why? So that you can learn from other people's mistakes, right? That's the key in life. Yes, there are certain things we all must experience to learn. But if you can learn from other people's mistakes, what's that quote? I can't remember it. Um, smart people learn from their own mistakes. Wise people learn from other people's mistakes. Something like that. I can't remember what it is. That's, the, that's, that's what you need to be doing, right? So manage your money, guys. Trading is very difficult. It's probably the hardest thing you'll ever try in life, okay? I'm serious. It's probably the hardest thing you will ever try in life. Not the most dangerous thing you'll ever try, right? We tip our cap to the military uh, men and women for that, and we have a lot of respect for those folks. But in terms of normal careers, it's probably the hardest thing you ever buy, ever try. And so many people fail, right? So many people fail at this because they can't manage their money. I mean, just... Give that some thought. I know I'm dragging this out, but just really give that some thought. If you risk a dollar or five dollars or ten dollars on a trade, no matter how bad that trade gets, oh, maybe you lose a hundred bucks. Maybe you lose a thousand. It's not going to end your world, right? If you made a horrible mistake on five dollar risk, oh my gosh, maybe you lose five hundred bucks. That's a horrible mistake, a hundred to one, right? It's not three hundred and fifty thousand dollars though. It's not going to end your marriage. Sad. Just sad to read. That's all there is to it. Okay? Sad to read. Learn from it. Don't do it. Okay? Learn from it. Don't do it. All right? There's a lot of failed traders out there that probably could have made it if they had proper money management. All right? Do not allow your expectations to exceed your experience. Okay? I don't care if you're from Harvard. I don't care if you're a doctor, a lawyer, a neurosurgeon, a rocket scientist, or Elon Musk, or anyone else. Your, your intelligence on paper means nothing in this business. Why? Because it's going to prey on your emotions first. So, learn from it. Let's move on. Okay? Exactly, Trade Slasher. Sad. All right. You've seen this before. You're like, what? Come on, Jared. What are we doing? Are we going to learn about three bar plays and buy setups today? No, we are not. Not all trades do this is the title of this slide. And there is a reason that title exists because not all trades do this, right? What I mean by that is this trade, which is a pretty nice three bar play, wide range bar over some resistance, narrow range resting bar triggers right here just above that $1.80, $1.90 area and just rips. Chops around, rips some more, pulls back to a rising moving average, and then just rips. You're just sitting there like, wow. If every trade did that, you know, Jeff Bezos would have some competition. But they don't. Not all trades do this. We like them when they do. We love it when they do. But they don't. So this stock almost tripled in value in one day. And you had a, probably a 20, 30 cent stop loss. And it went up three bucks almost. Yeah, 10 to 1. Pretty nice. But this isn't reality, okay? It's not. So, we need to talk about this today. I thought, and it's been a while since I've talked about this. Um, some of you who have taken professional trading strategy may have seen this slide before. Uh, I haven't used this slide in a while. It's been quite a while. I want to say a couple of years, I think, since I've used this slide. Um, but... This is a source of contention for a lot of traders. And it was the same for me when I started. What I'm getting at is it's natural to want to choose the most, I should say tightest. It's natural to want to choose the tightest stop loss when we pick a trade. Because the tightest stop loss allows us to get to our target the quickest, theoretically. Theoretically, right? Hey, if I'm looking for a two to one reward to risk, 
and I use a 10 cent stop, shoot, I only need 20 cents. And then I'm at my two to one target, I'm done. But if I use a 20 cent stop loss or a 40 cent stop loss, now I need 80 cents. Now I need 40 cents, right? So the inclination, the natural inclination is take the tightest stop possible all the time, right? And if, if it hits and runs, great. Maybe I make two to one, three to one, four to one, great. But the issue there is, and, and this is the part I think there's a disconnect when people take professional trading strategies or when you take any course. You see, it's, it's systematically done in, in a way to help you learn stacking, if that makes sense, meaning you're stacking the education, okay? So for example, in that course, and when you guys learn in the chat room, I'll say to you, support and resistance is an area, right? I say it all the time. Support and resistance is an area. And it says most trades have areas which you can place your stop loss. And then you guys take the area and you say, oh, well, it's an area. I'll use the tightest possible stop loss. Think about what I'm saying for a second. If support and resistance is an area, that means it could go anywhere in that area and still be valid. So here's a breakout, for example, on this chart right here. It could go below the 10 cent area, go below the 20 cent area, it could even peak a blue below the 40 cent area, and it's still valid because it's still in an area of support. But most of you just say, ooh, look how tight I can go. And you justify it in weird, strange ways, like, well, I'll just use the entry bar. Well, is that where the support is? Not really, Jared, but I need to put my stop somewhere on the chart. I'll use the entry bar. Well, that's a pretty tight stop loss. Okay, I get it. I'll use the this little tiniest, smallest little peekaboo bottoming tail one minute chart right here. I'll use the 20 cent stop. Wow. But the larger pivots down here. Yeah, I know. But look, Jared, if it breaks below this area, then it's definitely going to break below this area too. Right? People, they'll do anything to justify why they place the stop loss in that at that spot. And the truth of the matter is, we should generally be speaking, be giving them more room, not less room. Now, there are caveats to that and we'll talk about them. For example, risk to reward becomes a factor, average trading range becomes a factor, market conditions become a factor. But generally speaking, we should give trades as much room as possible. You know when this becomes even more relevant? Wait for it. Sit down for it. Oh my gosh. In volatile markets. When the market is extremely volatile, we should be giving our trades more room, not less room. Okay? Think about that concept. More room, not less room. So if you choose the tightest area, that gives you the least amount of flexibility, but also the greatest risk to reward. If you choose the widest stop area, it gives you the most flexibility, but it's also the worst risk to reward. Okay, now think about that. What's one of the things that good traders do? They add and reduce, right? They add back to winning trades. So why not? Now I understand, guys, I, I get it. Breakouts are momentum plays. Three bar plays are momentum trades. I get it. So you're thinking, well, I don't want it to pull back, Jared. It's a momentum trade. Well, in a volatile market, guess what? Momentum trades become choppy momentum trades, which means they pop and they drop and they overlap and they look like a toad in a blender and then they go, right? That's what we've been experiencing. And you're getting shaken out of a trade and then it goes higher or lower if you're short. But if you're a good trader, you'll give it some room with the intent to add back somewhere else. You may not get that ad, but more often than not, you will. I would say on 50 to 75% of your trades, there's an opportunity to add somewhere. That doesn't mean it's gonna work 75% of the time. I'm just saying on 50 to 75% of your trades, there's likely an area you can add to that position and get a more favorable risk to reward because now you have new information. But try to start I don't know why it says 15 minute chart there. See that little things, little things you find, all right? Try to start with giving it as much room as possible, all right? 
I don't mean crazy amounts of room. You don't want to completely destroy the risk reward, but start with the position that's most flexible. And this is even more true, truer for new traders. Why? Because you don't, you're not reading the charts in the same way an experienced trader is reading the chart. You're missing something. So for new traders, this is especially important. More room is better. It adds flexibility to your trade. You can always add back later. In a volatile market, it's better to give it more room. Okay? So this, this is annoying. Ever stop out of a trade by a few pennies or more only to watch it go higher for the rest of the day, ultimately hitting your original target? Yeah, I have. I mean, heck, if you look at Guild yesterday, we stopped out on Guild, didn't we? Guild just stayed in a range all day. Had we given Guild a lot more room, double the stop, wink, wink, we'll get to it, we would not have made much money. We may have even lost a little bit, but it stayed in a range and we would not have stopped out on it. I wouldn't have stopped out on it, right? Thankfully, BHC saved our day yesterday, but my point simply is we may have lost a little bit of money, but we wouldn't have lost a full stop, if that makes sense, okay? So what do we do about it, right? How can we mitigate this? What can we do about this? Well, here's a simple rule. You guys have heard me in the chat room talk about this, but I probably don't talk about it enough, especially <clears throat> in this particular environment. And we've been dealing with this level of volatility for many months now. I don't know when it's gonna stop. We'll have to wait and see. Inflation's gonna only get worse here in the next three to six months. I don't care what anybody says. They can sugarcoat it all they want. It's gonna get worse. The market has a lot more news and information to absorb, interest rate hikes, earnings season with many more companies missing earnings lately. This is recently compared to a quarter ago or a year ago, et cetera. So ever think about using a wider stop with fewer shares? Now, to many of you or some of you, this is not new. You're like, oh, well, yeah, but sure, Jared, you talked about that a while ago. But to some of you, this is a novel idea. Imagine taking what would be the stop that you were going to take and just double the stop loss. So if it was going to be a 30 cent stop loss, just give it 60, right? Sometimes there's an area on the chart you can do that. And other times you're using the chart and you're still doubling your stop loss. Don't worry. We'll take a look at some examples here in just a second. But say your entry is $20 and a normal stop loss is $19.75. You risk 100 bucks. you have 400 shares, okay? Now, if you want to use half shares double stop, you're going to still have the same entry. That doesn't change. But your stop loss is going to be $19.50. Same risk level, just half the number of shares. So instead of using $19.75, you're using $19.50. So how does that look? Well, let's take a look how it looks. Here's a trade on the left, right? Wide range igniting bar, narrow range resting bar in the upper 50% of bar number one. Bar number one and bar number two have relatively equal highs void above. That's the general basic gist of a three bar play. So you take this three bar play at $9.38, okay? Then $9.17 is below bar number two of the three bar play. That is what you are taught. Put it a penny or two under the bars low. That is it, that's straight out of the book. And then this happens, you get peekabooed in by a nickel, pops up to 942, and then slap pap, what happened? You got stopped out, right? I mean, this left a bottoming tail and you thought to it for a second, hmm, kind of looks like a good idea, all right? Then this happens and you get shaken out and you're pissed. All right, you're pissed because you just lost a thousand dollars, assuming that was your risk level, right? You just lost a thousand bucks, but you're really pissed now because this is what the stock did for the rest of the day. So you sat there and you looked at this and you're like, wow, I did everything right. I took a three bar play. I didn't rush into it. The daily had a nice gap over a consolidation with room back to $10.20, something like that. You can see the daily chart right there. You're like, check, 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 check. Jared, I used my piece of paper. Here's my checklist. I'm good. What did I do wrong? Dare you. That's what you're thinking. You're going to email me, go, I dare you. What did I do wrong, Jared? Well, in this case, you didn't do anything wrong, but the market decided it wanted to play a game with you and it stopped you out. Okay, but what if, what if you gave it double the stop 
because that's a 21 cent stop. So instead of $9.17 as your stop loss, now you have $8.96 as your stop loss. And instead of stopping out, you hit your full target, $10.22. Now I understand it's a $9 stop. And for some people, using a 44 cent stop loss or 42, sorry, 42 cent stop loss is really wide because that means you need 84 cents to hit target. I get it. You're thinking, does this stock have the room? That's going to be a challenge sometimes. If you move to break even at 1R, then you know maybe, maybe it's worth it. But the first trade here would have stopped out if you used the stop underneath the three bar play. But I want to go one step further on this chart. I want to go one step further. Okay. What if, what if you added back? Guys, talk to me for a minute. Let's see if you're paying attention. Where would you likely have added to this trade? Let's say you took the three bar play with the double stop. Where could you or would you have added to this position? Anybody? Any comments? Where would you or could you have added on this chart? Just take a look at it. Oh my goodness. No, 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 no. And no, and no. Wow, no one got this? What? Come on. The area in which you would likely add would be right here at 925. Austin got it. But the problem, you don't have a lot of shares, right? Right there, right here. 920, 925, right there. That pullback, why? If this stock breaks that bottoming tail, it's over, it's over. But here is the problem. You don't have a lot of room, right? Meaning you're at 896 and now you can raise your stop to $9, eh, four cents isn't much. So this is an opportunity to add, but in this particular case, it doesn't give us a lot of shares to add. But you all failed. Austin got it right. Michael, that first pullback here, I don't know if that's what you meant. Francis, above 1020. This consolidation, or sorry, this pullback is where you would add. Right around 925-ish, I guess it is. I don't know the exact price. Why? Because of that bottoming tail. You would add right over here, and you would put your stop right under the bottoming tail. But again, it's not going to give you a lot of shares to add because it's so close to your original stop loss. Okay, if that makes sense. All right. Um, but that's the ad point. And then the stock rips, consolidates, and rips. After that, there really are no ad points on this. Okay, I would not likely add at $10. Why? Look at the pivot. The pivot's at 10 to 10.20, right? The pivot on the daily charts at 10 to 10.20. Why would you add right at resistance? You probably wouldn't do that. You would add on the pullback. The reason I'm commenting is sometimes you will have a more favorable ad. This is a great area to add. You just don't get a lot of shares. But the general purpose, the general point of this slide is to show you, hey, while you did everything right on the first trade to three bar play, what if you did use double the stop? Instead of losing 1,000, you make 2,000. That's a $3,000 swing in your account. That's a 3R swing in your trading account, okay? That's a big deal on one trade. Because the only other option is the 84% play, but you're still only going to net a thousand bucks out of it because you got to get your money back from the first trade and then get the winning trade. Another example, this, this is what we're seeing a lot of lately, right? We're seeing a lot of this lately. So you have a stock that moves up, pulls back, lower high, lower high, lower high. Is this a tremendous buy setup no but it's it's okay right it's okay so you're going to get in at 313.40 here 
right there on the green bar. You're going to put your stop loss at 312.60 under the green bar. So if you look at that, you're in on the move over to the right here. You're in on the green bar and your stop loss is the green bar immediately after you get into this stock, immediately a nasty red bar comes in and it holds your stop by a couple pennies and then the next bar tags you. Even if you gave it a little bit of room, it comes back up, would have tagged you again. Comes back down, would have tagged you again. Would have tagged you again. There are three areas here in which this stock would have tagged you, right? Three areas there. But what if, what if instead of using 312 as the stop, that's 80 cents, what if you use 311.80, right? And let's draw that, right? So 311.80, is gonna be right about there, okay? What if you use that as your stop loss? Under the low of the day by 30 or 40 cents, guess what? Rips. Now, you need a dollar sixty on the original trade, which is three fifteen. That's the original target. But now that we have double the stop, we have a dollar sixty stop loss, right? Instead of eighty cents, we doubled it. We have a dollar sixty. So now we need three dollars and twenty cents, which comes out to three sixteen sixty. Guess what? We move that target right to there, and now target's here, and we still hit the target, right? 316.20, sorry, 316.60, my bad, 316.60, my bad. But we still hit the target, okay? So instead of losing a thousand, you make two. It's a $3,000 swing by doing what? Giving it more room. Now, many of you are listening to this and it's going in one ear and out the other. You're not gonna do it. But talk to me, wait for it. Where could we add back on this trade? Talk to me. Where could we add back? There's one really nice area here we could add back. Where is it? Where is the add on this one? The ad on this one, you guys are really struggling today. The ad on this one is the three bar play right here. See where my cursor is? It's the three bar play right there at 313.60 or 70, right there. Why would you wait for 314? What is that 314, guys? Oh, it's the high of the day. The high of the day is not a pattern. Let me, come on, guys, talk to me. You guys are really struggling today. The high of the day is not a pattern. It's an area, okay? This is a pattern, right? Now, could you have been aggressive and added down here or down here? Perhaps, but that would have been very aggressive, okay? This three bar play right here, right there, Wide range bar takes out this pivot, this pivot, and nearly this pivot. Gives you a narrow range resting bar, another resting bar, and guess what you're not gonna do? You are not going to put your stop loss under the three bar play. You're going to put your stop loss where? Where are you gonna put your new stop loss? After you add back, where are you gonna put your new stop loss? After you add on the three bar play, where will we raise our stop loss to? That's right, the pivots, under these pivots, right here, right here. See it right there? I'll raise this up so you guys can see it, so there's no confusion. You're gonna raise your stop loss to there. You're gonna raise your stop loss to there. After you add on the three bar play, you're going to raise your stop loss there. It's gonna be like 312.50-ish, give or take. 312, why 313, guys? Where are you coming up with these numbers? But right around 312.50-ish. Now guess what? You get to raise your stop loss by 70 cents without paying up very much to do it. Think about this for a second. I really want you guys to pay attention, okay? 
you're getting an ad at 31360. You're not paying very much for that ad, only 20 cents. But you're getting to raise your stop loss by 70. Guess what you get to do? Add almost a full lot, right? You get to add almost a full position here. So let's say you add at 313.60, okay? And you raise your stop to 312.50. Your cost average would be 313.50. And now you have a $1 stop loss and you used to have a $1.60 stop loss. So you're probably gonna be able to add about 75% to this. So let's say you had 1200 or sorry 625 shares. You're probably going to be able to add about about 400 shares, 375 to be exact. Right? You're going to have about a dollar stop loss on a $1000 risk, so you'll be able to add about 375 shares. So again, you'll have about a $1 stop loss, slightly less with a 1000 shares. Guys, I need a yes or a no, a Y or an N if this makes sense. What I just said, does it make sense? Where we added, where we raised the stop, and how many shares, yes or no? Otherwise, I'll move. if, if it's no, I'll repeat it. If it's not, I'll, I'll, I'll go over it. I'll move on. Okay, remember, you are not going to raise your stop to below the three bar play. Put it where the, where the pivot is, where the support is, where people bought it up, where you have a reason to raise your stop, okay? So in this case, now your target isn't 316.60 anymore. Your target now becomes 315.50 because you have a $1 stop loss and you didn't pay much to get it. So now let's do this. Let's move this right here now. So guess what happens, guys, in this particular case? This is important, like this is next level stuff, so pay attention. You take the original trade with an 80 cent stop loss. You needed 315 for your full target, but it stops you out, right? It stopped you out, that's that pink line. If you use the wider stop, you don't get stopped out. After the trade, gives you an opportunity to add back on the three bar play. You will then add back on the three bar play. You will then raise your stop loss. And guess what? Your target becomes almost, not quite, not quite, almost what the original target was. The original target was 315. The new target's 315.50. That's not much different on a $300 stop. And you didn't stop out on the first trade. Give that some thought, guys. Really give it some thought, especially on buy setups, because we're seeing this happen a lot. We talked about it earlier today on BABA, okay? We talked about it earlier on BABA, all right? It chopped around, it, it held the stop loss barely. Okay, you're missing the concept, Bertle. You're completely missing the concept. It has nothing to do with an 80 cent stop loss, my man. If it was a $2 stop loss, it's the same concept. We wouldn't make it a $4 stop loss. You're missing the concept, okay? The concept is don't get shaken out because if you follow the textbook, it's going to say, well, then you wouldn't have made that comment, okay? Because it's a buy setup. You get in when it triggers, you put your stop below the low. That's the concept. We're changing it. We're giving it twice the space, and then we're looking to add back, all right? And that's key, guys. Here's another example. Now, granted, this is a nasty example, okay? Unfortunately, but it does happen. So you have a stock here that actually has a pretty good entry at 1870. It really does. That's a nice entry at 1870. Stock moves up, consolidates, shakes out, puts in a big red bar, retests the shake, comes back up. Now, to be fair, okay? To be fair, this is a tough one. It's tough because you already have the bottoming tail. You already have the little shake bottoming tail plus the red bar and it still comes back up. So there will be some traders thinking, ooh, I'm gonna use a 10 cent stop, okay? But most traders will put their stop loss here, 20 cents, okay? So 
that's a reasonable stop loss. There's nothing inherently wrong with this stop loss. I want to be clear about that. There's nothing wrong with this stop loss. You get in at $19. Your stop loss is is $18.80. The stock pops up $0.18 cents and then shakes the tree by two damn pennies. Probably tagged you on the penny. You want to talk about how, you want to talk about this? Oh my goodness gracious! Tell me I'm lying. That thing tags you, and then you want to do this, and I wouldn't blame you. You want to literally put both hands through your monitor, all of them. You want to throw it across the room, rip the keyboard out, rip the mouse out, step on it, take a sledgehammer, and stomp on it. Tell me I'm wrong, because. It just got you by a penny or two, literally on the penny at the penny to the penny, right? That's exactly what just happened. And then it laughed at you and went straight back up to your target. And you're sitting there and you're going F four letter words. And it happened 10 minutes later, hit target, okay? This is that, if you know what I mean by that, this is that scenario that traders talk about that no one on the outside world understands. You know what I mean? When you tell your spouse or your friend or whomever about trading that day and they go, oh, that sucks. No, you don't get it. It was on the penny, man. And then it hit target. I lost a thousand, but I should have made two. You don't get it. Yeah, yeah, no, you'll get them next time, dude. They don't get it because they're not traders. So in this case, this is levels of frustration that make you want to break monitors. But what if you used 1860 as a stop loss? You wouldn't have stopped out, okay? Now, there's two choices here. There are two choices here. Use the wide stop, and then by the end of the day, you end up getting just over an R. I, I should have put it on here, but this stock finished today just above 1940, okay? It ended the day just above 1940. My apologies for not putting that on. But the point is, instead of losing an R, you made an R. Right? Instead of losing a thousand, you made a thousand by giving it double the room. And what else could you have done? What else could you have done? Talk to me. It's already on the chart. It already says it to you. Tell me where. Tell me what price. Tell me what you could have done here. Tell me what you could have done. It's on the chart. Just before 1015. Call it 1013. What could you have done there? Anyone? Bueller? Bueller? Oh no, you're already in, Dean. Remember, we used twice the stop loss. We already we used double the stop here, so we're still in. This is if you stopped on the first trade. Guys, what, what are, you, are you guys okay today? You guys doing all right? Man, it makes me wonder if we need to do you know this more often or something. Add back at 19 bucks. And then raise your stop to just under that tail. And guess what? Now you get your 2R. So you already got in at 19. You're already in at 19. You use double the stop loss at 1860, right? So if you were risking $1,000 on this trade, uh, you would have what? 40 cents stop loss, $1,000, 2,500 shares, right? You'd have 2,500 shares here, okay? But the shakeout happens, gives you an alternate opportunity with a little pseudo buy setup shakeout. Remember, support's an area, it's an area. Then you would add at $19. Let's just say this, guys. Okay, you guys are getting confused by the re-entry. You're not out of the trade. We used 1860 as a stop. So you're not gonna have a re-entry that you're already, already in the trade. So you're gonna add at $19. You're gonna raise your stop loss right here. Right there, it's like 1875. So now you're gonna end up with a 25 cent stop. Instead of a 40 cent stop, you now have a 25 cent stop. And guess what? You're gonna get your two to one. All because you use the wider stop, let the stock shake around, and then add it back to it. Seems like a no brainer, especially in a volatile environment, right? One last comment before we start wrapping this up. The 84% play still applies. 
the 84% play still applies. You could use double the stop and still get stopped out, right? You could use double the stop and still get stopped out, right? So if you look at certain trades, you know, you could use the high of the day and still get tagged, right? But that doesn't mean you can't re-enter, right? Doesn't mean you can't re-enter. So some traders here, sorry, this is the double stop area, my bad. My bad, hold on, let me move this up, my apologies. I'm gonna confuse you guys, you're already confused enough. Don't want that to happen, right? So the stop loss is up here, that's the double stop area, okay? That's the double stop area, my apologies, all right? So now you have a 50 cent stop loss, all right? You still get tagged. You still get stopped out right there. You still get stopped out right there, okay? Use the original stop loss and get back in at the original price. This is what happens, right? So again, here's your double stop up here, but your double stop gets stopped, right? Your double stop gets stopped. But this re-triggers down at 50.10, holds the original stop, and then does this. Now, by the end of the day, it's not a full 2R, but 1.8R is better than minus 1R, right? So in this case, you'll net 800 versus losing 1,000 because the first trade lost 1,000 and the second trade made 1,800. So you're going to net 800 bucks, assuming your risk is $1,000. So yes, sometimes even with double the stop, you're going to get stopped out, but the 84% play still applies. It still applies. And the odds you're going to get stopped out twice are unlikely, right? I mean, if you're using double the stop to begin with and you get stopped out and you use the 84% play and get back in, the odds you get stopped twice are slim. And this is another possibility where you could have added right here. See it right there at 49.90? And you could have lowered your stop loss to like 50.20. Here's another opportunity to add at 49.90 on a breakdown and lower your stop to 50.20, okay? Better to get something than a loss. Exactly correct, Jason. That's the whole concept, right? Better to get a little bit of money than a, than a full loss. Unmall has been trying to lately use more of that idea. But guys, here's the thing. The positives and negatives. Half the share is double the stop. It gives you more flexibility, more margin for error, especially for newer traders. Higher batting average because fewer trades will stop out, right? Helps build confidence because you're winning more often. Lower shares uses less buying power. You can take more trades, right? Take higher price stocks with a smaller account. Why? Because you're using wider stops and it makes money. Those are all the positive attributes. The negatives, you'll be in trades a lot longer, so you're gonna need more patience. Fewer trades will hit to our targets, lower reward to risk, and a lower win-loss ratio, right? We talked about expectancy and all that stuff. For me, in my opinion, especially for newer traders, the positives outweigh the negatives. Because from my experience, usually, like I said earlier, 50 to 75% of the time, you will get an opportunity to add back. Not always, but often, you will get an opportunity to add back. And if you do, it's almost like having the original trade with the original stop, but more confirmation. Isn't that important? I mean, let's take a look at this for a second. Let's go back for a minute, okay? Look at the level of confirmation you get on this. Look at the level of confirmation you get now. Now that you use the wider stop, yes, we had some confirmation here with the bottoming tail. Yes, we had a red bar engulfed, but now you get a nasty shakeout and goes right back up. Now you have massive confirmation at 1880. Sweet and you get to add back and you're no less wiser for it. Does that make sense? Meaning you're still, you still get your 2R target at almost the same spot, but way more confirmation, which means much more reliability. Let's do it one more time, right? Same thing here. Now you get the bottoming tail, the pivot. Now you have way more confirmation, why? Because instead of just one right here, you have this bottoming tail, that's more confirmation. You have this bottoming tail, that's more confirmation. And you have this bottoming, you have three more areas of confirmation, bottoming tail, bottoming tail, bottoming tail, and you get a wide range igniting bar showing buyers are stepping up with a three bar play. There's commitment plus confirmation. 
Oh, and by the way, I added back, my target's almost the same area. Now, to be clear, sometimes you don't get the ad. But when you do, now you have all the extra confirmation, a far more reliable trade, and almost the same target. It's hard to beat that, isn't it? It's very hard to beat that. All right? So these are the positives. These are the negatives. For newer traders, the positives significantly outweigh the negatives, especially with the margin of error. Um, some of you come in with smaller accounts, so this can be helpful in terms of using less buying power, et cetera, and so forth. So I hope you guys learned a little bit about how to better navigate these choppy, volatile, volatile markets, but not just these choppy markets, markets in general. Right? If you're a newer trader, you need a little more flexibility. You need a little more margin of error, a little more room, okay? Because you're new. You don't know exactly what you're doing. Um, so this, I think, will help. The half the shares, double the stop, plus the 84% play, and the add back. There's three concepts there. Half the shares, double the stop, add and reduce, 84% play. Again, I'm not trying to stroke myself on the back, but I've done a lot of lectures. This is one of the most powerful yet simplest lectures you will ever get from me, okay? It's one of the most powerful yet simplest lectures. I mean, that's gold right there, and I don't usually say that about my lectures. That shit is gold, all right? So I hope you learned a little about that. I hope it makes you a better trader. I'm Jared Wesley of Live Traders. We'll get back at it again next week. Thank you.